In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 4.3, Monetary Policy. Firstly, we will look at some definitions and some monetary policy measures. So the money supply is the amount of money in the economy at any particular point in time. And money includes banknotes, coins and bank accounts. And in the US, this is called the M2 money supply. Monetary policy are the decisions on the money supply to control macroeconomic objectives. This is usually controlled by the central bank. And what they do is they change or manipulate the interest rate, which changes the cost of borrowing and the reward for savings for different stakeholders, which leads to the change in the way firms and consumers spend and invest money. What the central bank can do is they can increase the money supply within the economy by buying government debt. So for how this works, the government issues, let's say, $100 worth of debt. Let's call this a bond. And then the central bank will buy this bond from the government and pay the government $100. And now the government owes the central bank $100, but in turn, they now have $100 worth of cash, which they can spend into the economy. The central bank can encourage commercial banks to lend more money by changing the interest rates. So more money means more spending. Changing the interest rates means a few things. For example, during COVID, the US government decreased the interest rates from 0% to 0.25%, which is extremely low. This meant that households that were already in debt will pay less in interest. So servicing the debt will be lower. And because cost of money is cheaper, households and firms will borrow more money to spend or invest. There is also very little incentive to save at these levels of interest. Therefore, they will start spending and investing and aggregate demand will increase. Central banks can also use monetary policy to influence the exchange rate. So what they can do is that they can sell their own currency, which in turn weakens it. The reason is that the supply of their own currency will shift to the right, which means the quantity of currency available is high, which then lowers its price. The effect of this is that exports will increase. Alternatively, they can use their foreign currency reserves to buy back their own currency, which strengthens it and this will lead to cheaper imports. Moving on to the effects of monetary policy on government macroeconomic aims. The government will use expansionary monetary policy and the aim of this is to boost the economic activity by expanding the money supply. Expansionary monetary policy will promote economic growth as low rates will encourage spending and investments which leads to growth and the interest rates on current loans will be cheaper for households and firms which will result in more discretionary spending expansionary monetary policy also aims for full employment this is because more spending creates the need for more jobs and as business investments increase due to the lower interest rate, they require additional human capital, meaning more people are required to do the job. Expansionary monetary policy also aims for more stable prices and lower inflation. This is because the productive capacity of the economy has increased, meaning more goods and services will be produced. This will result in higher prices will not be incurred. And lastly, the government is able to achieve a balance of payment stability. This is because a lower exchange rate through government intervention can be achieved. And this can lead to an improved international competitiveness. So moving on to contractionary monetary policy. This is when they increase interest rates to reduce overspending and limit investment. Governments will do this in times of when the economy is hot. In times of high inflation, high interest rates are used to reduce spending and investment, which is a component of aggregate demand. This reduces the threat of inflation within the economy. However, this harms economic growth and job losses. 
And finally, moving on to the limitations of monetary policy, there are always time lags when it comes to any policy, as it takes time for the economy to feel the effects of the policy. Or some firms and households might be on a fixed-term interest agreement for the next, let's say, 30 years, so the fluctuations of interest rates will have no effect on these individuals and firms. And possibly the most important limitation is that other factors such as consumer confidence or business confidence is absolutely key. For instance, if the interest rate was at zero and consumers were not confident in the economy, they will not be borrowing more money just because it's cheap. A real-world example is Japan. Consumers have a very low confidence in the economy and Japan's central bank did the unimaginable and they made interest rates negative. So their interest rate at one point was negative 0.25%. Yes, they were paying people to borrow money. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.